Hello, my name's Bev and I'm the author of the book Please Eat, A Mother's Struggle to Free Her Teenage Son from Anorexia, which describes our family's battle with the deadly eating disorder, anorexia nervosa, which my teenage son Ben developed back in 2009 when he was just 15 years old. As I mentioned in a previous video, I was planning to take Ben on holiday this year. We were going to holiday in the UK to really just test the water to see if things went okay this time because if you've been following my videos you'll know that the previous year in the summer of 2010 we'd gone to the Charente in France and it had been an absolute nightmare from start to finish with the eating disorder completely raging and going rampant. Um, but I felt a heck of a lot more confident by the summer of 2011, a year later. And as I said, I was planning to go on holiday to the seaside with, with Ben to see how he got on. And here's um, a series of posts about that holiday and the first one is from the 6th of August 2011 and it's called Seaside Here I Come This Time with Ben in Tow. A couple of years ago I discovered a great little bolt hole overlooking a wide bay at the seaside. The sunny south facing living room looks straight out over the sea. The two bedrooms overlook the sea. Everything overlooks the sea. And at night you can lie in bed, staring out across the high tide with the pretty lights reflected in the water. Over the past 24 months, I've used it as an escape from the eating disorder. I'd leave Ben with his dad and get the train or take the car down to my little seaside retreat. However, although you can distance yourself physically from the eating disorder, I found you can't do it mentally. And last August, I had to leave after just 24 hours because I just couldn't relax and enjoy myself. I was as miserable as hell and felt completely trapped by the eating disorder that my son was going through. At that time, I really couldn't see any lights at the end of the tunnel. Ben wasn't improving. In fact, he was getting worse. And I found it difficult to handle being surrounded by normal families having a normal summer holiday. So I came back home. But this year, things have improved so much that I'm taking Ben along with me. We've got a great little itinerary planned. We'll take the train there and spend three days visiting some really interesting places, including Plymouth and Bath. Weather permitting, we'll take evening strolls along the prom to watch the tide come in and maybe stop off for a cappuccino or a glass of wine at that chilled little bar overlooking the rock pools and peninsula. Also, I always like to do my annual pilgrimage to my grandparents' old house, the sprawling Victorian villa where I used to spend every summer of the first 18 years of my life. But first, I must work out what we need to eat because we're going by train, I can't take loads of snacks and stuff with me. However, there is a supermarket right opposite the station and we can eat at Pizza Express. So that's my job today, to add up calories for a typical day's eating to make sure Ben gets sufficient. It's especially important, as the scales have shown, that his weight has remained stable for a couple of weeks and we need to increase that's the end of that post and the next one that talks about the holiday is from the 20th of August 2011 and it's called Ups and Downs in the Southwest. Ben and I have just come back from five days in the Southwest. Much of the time everything was fine with Ben overcoming scores of challenges. 
The eating disorder demon reared its ugly head a couple of times, once in Tesco's when choosing a meal deal for lunch, and once, more seriously, in Bath, which I will talk about later on when I finished unpacking and all the other stuff I need to do. But at the end of the day, we hopefully kicked the eating disorder into touch. And that's the end of that very short post. And the final two posts about our holiday are from the 20th of August, 2011. And the first one is called The Eating Disorder Surfaces in Bath and Lunch is a Washout. There's nothing I want on the menu, said Ben in the old familiar way. But there was no way I was getting up and leaving. The menu was fine, stuff Ben normally eats at home. And the 18th century restaurant in Bath came highly recommended. So I stayed put and Ben reacted by sitting with his book in silence, refusing the offer of a drink. And when the food arrived, he just stared at it while I tucked into my delicious meal. I knew what he was staring at. The olive oil drizzled all over the side salad and garnish, plus the bruschetta open-style sandwich also brushed with oil. So he just sat in sullen silence while the eating disorder refused to let him eat. I ate my meal, and then I ate his meal as well because I didn't want the embarrassment of being faced with a baffled waitress who wouldn't understand why the delicious food lay untouched. Goodness only knows what our fellow diners thought, but I didn't care. I paid for our meals and we made our exit in silence. Then I frog-marched Ben back to the railway station because there was no way I was going to pay for us to tour the Roman baths, which was the primary re reason for this visit. Ben or rather the eating disorder, ranted, raved and wept in full view of everyone in the crowded station and tried to blame me for why he hadn't eaten his lunch. I only went there because you wanted me to, etc, etc. No, I said, amongst other things, which included why I was never going to stop working at this until I'd finally banished the eating disorder from Ben's life. It was purely and simply because of the eating disorder. The eating disorder was at the heart of this, I said. So I ended up paying for a second lunch in the Marks and Spencers cafe to make sure he got some food. I drowned my sorrows in a coffee and millionaire's shortbread slice, wondering what the hell we were doing in Marks and Spencers when we were surrounded by some of Bath's finest eateries not to mention the fact that we'd already had lunch. But, to Ben's credit, he did choose a lot of challenge foods, including a Mars bar, so it wasn't all bad news. And the next post, very, very short one, is also from the 20th of August 2011, and it's called, And Now for the Good News which is the sheer number of food challenges Ben did while on our mini break in the southwest. Included in the blitz on fear foods was a Mars bar, two packets of high calorie, high fat crisps, a Solero lollipop, the M&S ultimate sandwich and a meal from Pizza Express. Plus, apart from the blip in Bath, Everything was very relaxed, a complete contrast to last time I visited that apartment overlooking the sea. And that's the end of that post. I'm really proud of both of us on that short holiday in the southwest. Um, ben, for challenging himself with a whole number of different fear foods and for not letting the eating disorder come to the surface apart from that one time in Bath and even then afterwards he was keen to show me and he said this was the case he wanted to show me that he 
that that was the eating disorder, not letting him do that. And he was fighting the eating disorder by going on to eat more food that day, a Mars bar, some crisps, a massive sandwich, and so on, which is all credit to him, was absolutely wonderful. Um, and also me, because I was not going to let the eating disorder win, I was going to fight it and not let it get away with things. And that is why I stood my ground at the railway station and refused to to take Ben on the tour of the Roman baths, which was the reason why we'd visited Bath in the first place. Um, and it showed Ben that I wasn't going to stand for the eating disorder. I wasn't going to let it consume him and that he and I would fight together to get rid of it and kick it out of his life. And it just felt like, despite the scene at the railway station in Bath and the problem in the cafe over lunch, that um, it was really positive that... um, just demonstrating to the eating disorder that he and I were going to overcome it and it wasn't going to stand in our way. So, yeah, quite a positive holiday all in all. Thank you for listening. You'll find a link below to my blog and you'll also find a link to my website where you can download free PDFs of my blog and also a link to Amazon where you can buy a copy of my book. Mm-hmm.